Baycon 2022. I graduated high school in 2005. By 2006, I had Wi-Fi in my roof at college. In 2009, I passed my tech license, and a year later, I was a general. I still had a few WRT 54Gs laying around, and if they weren't flashed with DDWRT, I was trying to flash them with the HSMM firmware that was just starting out in Austin, Texas. The WRT 54G was a real popular piece of equipment. Low starting price, limited memory, and very low power antennas. You had to use external antennas, not weather sealed, all the memory wore out. They had a limited data rate, 54 megabits per second. Wireless speeds increased drastically. In 2016, we put one of the first networks on the air with Arden firmware running on top of Ubiquiti equipment. Four years ago, I was appointed as a technical specialist for the ARL East Bay section. I began discussing mesh with a lot of different groups in the East Bay section. Some had no concept of a high-speed data network. Others didn't need one for their communication plan. Others couldn't make it work because there wasn't enough line-of-sight topography within the city to support data links between the sites they needed. It became apparent that not everybody needed to use the mesh the same. Take Caltrans or a county trying to contact the state of California. Counties don't need to talk to counties, but counties all need to communicate within the same OES district. Value added if we can provide situational awareness to a served agency. We may have to provide alternative means of high-speed data connectivity. We may have to provide the only means of high-speed data connectivity. Does your local agency have a plan for when the communication data networks fail or get interrupted? Part 97 and Part 15 microwave networks could help. What if 20 meters was shared spectrum in emergencies? If spectrum allocations aren't defended, there will be no alternatives. Has ham radio been left behind? Digital voice modes like DMR, C4F, and P25, amateur packet, 1200 to 9600 bits per second, Vera, low rate data packets are okay. Data packet technology was developed in the mid-60s and was put into practical application in the 1970s and 80s. Wireless data speeds are increasing. The devices that we are using are driving an increase in wireless data transfer speeds. The packet exchange network falls 20 years short of being modern. It's based on AX25 packet framing, which is only layer 2 at the data link. Underlying AFSK lacks error correction, and its logical packet exchange network knows nothing about the rest of the network. It's a logical packet exchange network that knows nothing about the rest of the network. Packets are sent or received and then logically digipeded or I-gated or act. The originating node knows nothing about the best way to send a packet across a simplex channel. BBS systems have to be accessed individually on unique simplex channels. A modern data network is a well-established means of high-speed computer-to-computer communication. Request to send if data isn't sent? No problem. High-speed data network's there for that. Domain names, address lookups, transport connections. The routing protocol used by Arden handles where data needs to be sent across different RF and data link paths. Arden. Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network. It's a custom firmware image. The firmware allows for ad hoc setup. What can you do on a mesh? Echolink, IRLP, site linking, streaming, video surveillance, remote AQI, wind gas sensor networks, voice over IP, drag and drop file sharing, APRS, ADBS, AIS relay, remote receivers or transmitters, self-hosted email accounts, WinLink terminals, web-based reporting, web-based reporting applications, collaborative computing like Mattermost, CAD, network visualization, network time services, satellite downlink distribution, weather data, games, firmware allows for easy ad hoc networking. OLSRD is an optimized link state routing protocol 
that is optimized for mobile ad hoc networks, but can also be used on other networks. It is a proactive link state routing protocol that floods the topography table of its neighbors to all nodes on the network, which can compute optimal four-wing paths locally. So what is OLSRD doing? Each node synchronizes domain names, listed services, node locations, ETX metrics, and responds with its known routes, RF, network, and device-to-device -device VLANs. Each node calculates a metric value, computes the best path across a network. Larger tables create a computational load on a very limited resource device. Moving away from OLSRD to protocols like Batman and Catwoman would reduce that computational load put upon a single node to better define paths across a complex network. SF WIMS grant in 2020 has set the stones for the entire Bay Area to become educated and interconnected. It hasn't been easy. You have to take a real hard look at what paths exist and what sites exist. SFWIM's focus right now is to promote use of Arden firmware while building a resilient data backbone through the Bay Area. We live in an urban environment. Trees, cranes, buildings, not enough elevation, fog, thermal inversion layers. Building a mesh network is more like a microwave propagation network. Atmospheric fluctuation, reflected signal path, path loss, true line of sight versus the predicted line of sight, ships, but what builds a strong network? What do you need to look for? The radios automatically negotiate for the best modulation rate based on SNR, but you need to go for gain to get the highest data rate. Weak signals will not produce high data throughput link budget we can calculate it all we want until there's a tree in the way there is absolutely no way to predict the tree you have to verify line of sight visually we can use tools like airlink to help model a network it will not forego a visual verification we're building a network where multiple paths may exist Bandwidth is not consistent across the network. Low data rate paths do exist, and high rate data paths do exist. But routing is still based on best path to destination. The rocket allows you to pick the best antenna, whether it be an omnidirectional antenna, a narrow sector, a wide sector, or a 37 dBi dish. Sites don't always have the coverage you need. Repeater sites are key to regional coverage. No location is perfect. There is always going to be something. Access, line of sight, mounting, power, RFI. The web interface also depicts the radio's data rate mode. Channel band plans may be used in your area. Sector channelization allows nodes to be isolated while connecting point-to-point -point links. Hidden transmitter syndrome and exposed receiver syndrome. I can hear you, but you can't hear me. Well, that's bad for the modulation mode. Clear to sins need to be heard. Arden firmware offers VLAN tagging for advanced switch setup. DTD nodes are connected via a local VLAN. Two, devices like the HAP GLAR750 can be used as a tunnel server or as a local portable hub. As you can see here, a managed switch simplifies the overall power distribution. The devices are fairly easy to power using a supplied DC injector with 120 volt UPS. Solar systems can be managed or unmanaged running at 12 volts or 24 volts. The solar and battery system needs to be scaled to the power consumption Installations in the North Bay, San Francisco, and Berkeley were solar and off the grid. Having just a standalone repeater may be useful for you. It doesn't have to be connected to the larger 
Bay Area Mesh Network. Help us find high sites and towers to install BAM nodes on around the Bay Area. Join us on Slack, email, Mattermost, or Mesh Chat, or visit us at sfwim.net. Thanks for inviting me to Baycon. I look forward to your questions.